I'm Alex Radical from Board Game Co. And today I'm doing five mini reviews of, well, five games that I mostly don't feel the need to play again. I say mostly because I probably will finish playing through Bargain Basement Bathysphere, primarily because it's solo, it's easy to play, it plays quickly, and I'm a sucker for progression and sort of unlocking stuff, or just progression. I'm a sucker for progression when it's there, especially if I think I can finish it. So I will probably finish this, but we'll see. But five games. Let's go ahead and dive into these five games, talking about them. They've all they've all been enjoyable to a degree, and they also all have a reason why I just don't feel the need to continue playing them. We'll cover this one last, because that's the one I think I will play. Now, normally when I do some of these small box reviews, some of these quicker, you know, all-in-one reviews, I'll open up the box, I'll show you the components and all that stuff, but these are larger box games, and so for the most part, I won't do that, although I will show you the backs of the boxes, like things like this over here, and, and talk about some general stuff in these games. But let's start off with the back with Dice Manor over here. Dice Manner is fun. I genuinely enjoy this game. There's a very specific reason why I'm getting rid of it and I don't feel the need to play it again, but effectively Dice Manor is a game which players are going to be rolling dice while trying to gather tiles and to advertise in this game while they line up dice in different sections in order to gather those things. You want to have the most of a given die, so you're going to roll a handful of dice and then assign all your fives somewhere, or all your fours, and then go around and around and re-roll the rest of your dice and assign all of one number. Having the most of a die at a specific location will give you that tile or give you the advertising, and you're trying to build out the best manner and advertise the best and have the best tiles to all, all score points off of another. And if the system sounds in any way familiar to you, it's because it's a system that was in the game Las Vegas, which I think is just a better system. I think Dice Manor takes Las Vegas, which is a delightful game that teaches in four minutes. Las Vegas is a game with genuinely, I could teach you the game in four minutes, get you up and running, and it gives you a fun system of rolling dice and matching them to various locations in a sense that gives you that feel of gambling. It feels thematically appropriate to the game and it's easy and simple to teach. Dice Manor takes that same system and it does so in a way that feels less thematically intuitive and less mechanically intuitive because they add extra elements in there and all those extra things didn't fully enhance my gameplay but they did add to the barriers to entry. So I've enjoyed playing this. I like this game. I think you'll have a fun time with this game and I think if you do like this game check out Las Vegas because I think it just does it better. It teaches faster, it plays faster, it is more intuitive and it gives you the same degree of fun. Again, good game and better game. That's going to be Dice Manor. Good game from uh, Arcane Wonders. Again, I think it's fun. I just don't think it needs to be played again. Then we have Talisman Harry Potter. Now, Talisman Harry Potter is basically Talisman with the Harry Potter theme thrown on and a few small changes throughout the course of the game. If you haven't played Talisman, Talisman in general is a system which you roll dice and move around the board. You choose which location to go and you slowly build up your allies, your equipment, your gear until you eventually head your way to the final showdown by making your way through three concentric circles to the inner ring and the final showdown. In this case, he who must not be named. That's the basic idea of the game. That's the basic idea of the game play system here. You're rolling dice and trying to build up your character. It's a lot of luck as you roll and figure out which way you're moving in the board. You're going to have these, these boards over here that you're, again, you have these concentric rings, you have these miniatures, the characters, the various items and gear you're building up, and you can be rolling dice to see where you move. You can be rolling dice in dozens of encounters. You can be rolling dice against other players. It's just a whole lot of dice rolling while you build up your characters. Now, I didn't love the original Talisman. I thought it was a fine experience that was enjoyable to play through, but way too long for what I got out of the experience, and I don't think this changed my mind at all. I like the Harry Potter IP. I do. I enjoy, you know, going through the universe and collecting various gear and equipment and having various, uh, you know, fighting against or with other characters in that universe. And so, would I prefer to play Talisman Harry Potter over the original Talisman? Marginally, yes, especially with playing it, if playing this with my kids. But past that, I think both systems suffer from the same problem. A ton of dice rolling, not a lot of agency, a degree of progression that is fun and enjoyable, but not compelling enough for the rules complexity and game length that are present. I think if you're looking for lighter experiences, there are plenty out there. And if you're looking for games that have the same degree of complexity to the rules, there are ones that give you more sense, more of a sense of agency and strategy as you go through them. I think Talisman in, in general, as a system, and again, I don't think Harry Potter changes that, I think Talisman as a general system is a little too high on the complexity and not high enough on the sense of agency and strategy for it to be a game system that I can overly recommend. I've had fun going through them, but it's not one that I'd overly recommend. And then we have Sorcerer's Arena, which is actually one of the better games on this list. Sorcerer's Arena gives you a skirmish game with Sorcerer, with Disney IP characters. We have another Disney system going on here. You're going to have Disney IP characters with gorgeous Disney acrylic standees as you wander around the board, as you use your characters and combine your characters in the specific play styles to take down your enemies. Now, in general, in the game system, you're going to have a number of characters, and the game does level you up across a few rounds, if I recall correctly, a three rounds of progression as far as giving you additional rules as you go through the systems. So you'll start off with one, you know, slightly 
lighter game and they add more rules, more abilities, more things to be mindful of to level this up to be a game that is has significantly more depth than the box would instinctively convey. And depth that gives it to you in a sense of progression so you don't have it all front loaded, especially if you're someone who's new to skirmish games. I personally think that if you're you're used to skirmish games, you can probably skip the first one or two and go straight to the end if you're used to skirmish games. But for players who aren't and inherently given the IP, there will be lots of players who dive into this because of the IP and that sense of slow progression or because of the app for that matter. I believe this is an app as well, Sources Arena. And so there will be people who dive into this progressively, but it gives you a solid skirmish game that the earlier systems are a little light, the later systems are better, and it does have some of the same problems you typically see in skirmish games in which, you know, players are slowly, you know, the first few turns are kind of wasted just dancing towards the middle so you can attack each other and eventually hit each other, but then at that point the, the game does level up in terms of the complexity and depth. The complexity and depth really starts shining once you have multiple characters in play and the full rule set. Smaller character counts and the earlier rule set are kind of just, you know, playing cards back and forth until someone dies. It doesn't feel that strategic. As you add things, there's a degree of depth and complexity combined with an IP that is enjoyable, all wrapped up in a box that is fun. It's a fun game. I like the game. I also just have other skirmish games that I prefer, and I think that the way the rules are structured, first of all, does make referencing rules harder. In general, I've talked about this before, whenever you have a game system that kind of levels you up through the game, that's usually great for introducing people to the game, but it's usually a trade-off that comes that you pay the price for when you're trying to reference how to play the game if they don't handle that well. If you're looking for rules references, you kind of have to figure out which section do they teach that rule in. It's not as intuitive to check things up later. That's kind of a smaller nitpick, but past that, I think that as a skirmish game, this one is more focused on taking down the other characters, which is not my go-to preference for skirmish games. I frequently talked about the fact that it, I, what I like most in skirmish games is when there are additional elements on the table. When I'm playing through, uh, you know, Super Fantasy Brawl, when I'm playing through God Tier, there are additional objectives on the table to go for, and the idea of killing the other players is something to be mindful of and to consider, and represents a threat, and represents a timeout as you have to get back into play, but it's not about killing all the characters. It's not about simply just hitting the other person until they're dead, I have found that in skirmish games to be less satisfying, and this is far more of that, and I prefer when there's objectives key on the table that keep things interesting and give you more of a, a center to, to focus on, and killing other characters is just a part of that equation. And so overall, I've enjoyed this, I think it's fun, I think if you do like skirmish games where you just beat each other to death slowly, or maybe just knocking them out because they will show up next game, I think Disney Sources Arena is good. If you are used to skirmish games, again, I recommend going up to that third level right away or as fast as possible. The earlier levels will come across as a little too simplistic, uh, but for me, ultimately, the nature of the type of skirmish game it is means it's not one that I feel the need to keep. Then there we have Enola Holmes, a Keeper of Lost, Finder of Lost Souls, not Keeper of Lost Souls, that's far darker, Finder of Lost Souls. This is obviously based on the Enola Holmes, uh, you know, Netflix movie, uh, I think that, I think based on the first one, not actually sure, I didn't really heavily think about whether it's based on the first or the second, but either way, Enola Holmes, and this is kind of, whew, how to describe this, this is a, a dash of mastermind mixed in with like set collection and getting in each other's ways. In this game, you're going to be taking control of characters, you're going to be various locations, and the goal is to match symbols in the game. You have these various symbols, you can't see them that well on the board over here, but you have a board, you're trying to match these symbols, and you're trying to get in each other's way by... You have two sides to the game. You have the, the mastermind, so to speak, facing off against the various characters. You can play it as a one versus one. You can play it as a one versus many. But effectively, you're going to have the mastermind trying to get in the way of the other characters by blocking them, by playing symbols that get in their way. And then you have to counter by playing symbols back. And then eventually that kind of results in a bit of a mastermind experience where you start slowly guessing the various symbols and icons in play. And you start making educated guesses and you're informed to a degree what's right and wrong. So there's two elements going on. A little bit of worker placement, a little bit of three elements, I guess. Worker placement, a set collection, and back and forth blocking of symbols, and then mastermind style guessing. I like the mastermind style guessing. I like that in any system that has it, where you kind of have to start you know, using the piece of information at your disposal to try to craft a, you know, what is the actual answer. I found the back and forth aspect of symbol matching and, you know, matching and blocking and the symbols as you play these cards down, I found that to feel kind of just tedious. It didn't feel overly rewarding. There is strategy to it. There's I'm not heavily going to exactly how it plays out. There is strategy. There is decision making, but it kind of felt like I do this thing to to get the job done and you kind of block me and then I either am able to get past your blocks or not. As a system, it, it kind of just felt like it was present in the game without being overly rewarding. The rest of the game's fine. It's a decent game as far as, you know, uh, again, the, 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 the strategy and get involved in trying to get the right symbols you need in order to make those guesses and to ultimately win. Overall, it's a fine system, but elements of the game just felt too tedious and in each other's faces to be overly rewarding, at least for me. From there, we have Bargain Basement Bathysphere. Bargain Mason Bathysphere, this is one that I 
again, I don't know if I enjoy this the most. I probably, if I'm thinking about it critically, I mean, it's very hard to say, really, because you, whenever you cover games, you're not covering them in a vacuum. You're covering them in the greater ecosystem of games that are out there. And I enjoy these games to different degrees. I possibly enjoy this one the most, but it's more that this has a sense of progression to it. So I would say I want to play this one the most, versus Disney Sources Arena and Dice Manor, I probably enjoyed all three of these games the most, just these two I have less of a reason to keep around, versus this one I kind of want to finish it. But Bargain Basin and Bath Sphere is a game system which you're going to be rolling dice. It's a solo campaign game. I don't remember how many games there are. I did not finish it yet. I plan on finishing it. I hope to. Maybe 20 plays. 20 scenarios. There we go. 20 scenarios over here. But effectively, you're rolling dice and using those dice to go down three different maps, and each map, even those three different maps, there's more scenarios than there are maps because different sections unlock and new rules unlock as you go through it. But the general idea is you're rolling dice to try to figure out how to navigate around the board in a way that doesn't result in you running out of resources or air or any of the issues. So it's how you place the dice and which spots you land on and how you're mindful of the various uh, symbols in your way that you need to take care of. And then past that, each map gives you a bit of an objective, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to collect, as the various sections of each board open up. And there's a degree of progression as across, you know, I, I don't know exactly where it ends, but there's a degree of like new things are unlocked locked for the first like five or six games as you go through it in the game. Basically, roll a handful of dice and try to figure out how to move around the underwater ocean and bargain basement bathsphere in this roll and write adventure. And I enjoy it. I don't think it's amazingly compelling. I don't find the particular dice allocation strategy to be that much of a reward, but I like the system of, hey, I'm going to play another game. It'll take me 15 minutes. So I'll roll a bunch of dice. I'll move around and I'll try to get the points I need to score to complete the scenario. Along the way, I'll be gathering various things that can be earned towards future unlocks. You have these little uh, places where you can store things game to game, so you have a sense of progression, and you can cash those in for extra rewards and things as you go through the game. So overall, the sense of progression is there. The actual gameplay, very much on the lighter, not that rewarding end of things. I think the gameplay is... The gameplay is maybe a 3, and the uh, the sense of a 3 out of 5, to be very clear. The gameplay-wise alone is a 3 out of 5, but the sense of progression does push it up for me, and the fact that it's very quick and very easy to play, and makes for a good solo and or solo travel game, pushes it up to a 3.5 out of 5 for me. Speaking of which, I haven't really rated the rest of these games, so we should probably do that now. I found Enola Holmes, Finder of Lost Souls, to be a 3 out of 5. It was fine. I've enjoyed myself. I don't feel the need to dive back into it. Similarly, Talisman Harry Potter, probably a 3 out of 5 out as well. Same basic issue. It's just not compelling enough for the depth, and it's a little runs a little long, and it's ultimately still Talisman, which is a system I haven't loved. Versus Disney Sources Arena as a 3.5 out of 5. I definitely like it, definitely enjoy this. Kind of, a part of me kind of wants to build up more characters, but I already have too many, too many skirmish games as it is, and ultimately, I already mentioned, I like skirmish games that have a degree of objectives as opposed to simply slapping each other down. Dice Manor also a 3.5 out of 5. The problem is Las Vegas is an easy 4 for me. Las Vegas is light, but it's so easy, so compelling, and so addicting that this is just, to me, to me, this is purely an inferior game. It adds complexity, and it doesn't make the game better, and that makes it less fun than Las Vegas, at least to myself. And lastly, Bargain Pace and Bath Sphere. Again, gameplay alone, I probably prefer these two to this one. But gameplay plus unlocks, that changes the equation for me, and this one I definitely enjoy and do recommend. If you're looking for a fun system that will give you 20 plays, and then you can go ahead and pass it on to your friend, and they can get 20 plays out of it as well. And with that, those are five mini-reviews. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this helpful, and as always, I hope you have a good one.